So while artists such as Joseph Stella and Werner Dravis are responding to uh, the urban architecture of the United States, kind of finding a space of creative possibility, artists are still keeping an eye tuned back to Europe, not just for the artistic conversations that are happening, but the looming specter of fascism as it's uh, rearing its head in Spain and Italy and Germany. And so Kurt Seligman, for instance, a, a Swiss-born artist, produced this kind of surreal monstrosity phantom of the past in 1942, evoking the specter of Nazi Germany, which has profound consequences for another artists in this exhibition. This is an absolutely fascinating series that's like many of the prints in the show, has never before been on view. And it was produced by a little known German artist, Gustav Wolf, who worked as an illustrator uh, in the 1920s, um, illustrating Bibles, commercial periodicals, children's books, and has this very inventive, fantastical style. He is of Jewish descent and is forced to flee uh, Nazi Germany in 1938. And he comes to Manhattan and finds himself facing few financial or creative possibilities. He's, he lives in poverty, he works briefly on a chicken farm and does freelance work as much as possible, but really struggles to find any kind of financial stability, much less commercial success. This is a series of prints that Wolf produced in 1942, around the tail end of his stay in Manhattan, and it's titled A Vision of Manhattan. It's a portfolio of 12 etchings. We included 10 in this show. And you can see in these prints how he is using his vocabulary as an illustrator, this sort of fantastical imagery to convey um, his kind of tormented sense of alienation living in poverty in Manhattan. Here, um, urban architecture, the city becomes a platform for monsters, both fearsome and wondrous. Um, there are these really remarkable prints of angels or ghoulish sort of things or snakes sort of floating through this city that's utter otherwise entirely desolate and vacant and hostile. It's a very different response when you put it into comparison with what um, Joseph Stella or Bernard Dravis are producing slightly, slightly earlier on. Um, Wolf's story is somewhat of a tragic one. He um, holds out hope of being able to return to Germany after World War II, but um, dies of complications from an illness before doing so. Um, he is really representative of a community of artistic exiles as opposed to a sort of cosmopolitan mobile globe tra traveler that's evident elsewhere on the show. So the Carter's collection has works that, in which artists are responding to developments abroad in Europe, and at the same time, it includes examples of the ways that these artists, when they came to the United States, chose to engage directly with political and cultural conflicts that were happening in their adopted country. Louis Lazowick, for example, is an outspoken um, socialist activist in addition to his art making, and in the 1930s and 1940s, he created several prints that affirmed his empathy for black victims of American racial oppression. Living in New Jersey, he reads stories of lynching and racial oppression in Georgia and the South and produces a series of works, including this scene here titled Georgia Landscape, that are responding to um, the, the prison system in the South at that time.